a representation of a regular icosahedron. Like, if you draw all the diagonals, they intersect in a, in a point, in a center, that is equidistance of all the vertices and of all the sides and of all the, the faces. This is the vertex. So, the icosahedron can be break down into 20 equal pyramids that are tetrahedrons like this one. You see? This tetrahedron. 20 like this one. Aristotle believed that since this was regular, these 20 uh, tetrahedrons had to be also regular. And he stated that, that 20 regular tetrahedron, tetrahedrons formed a regular icosahedron. But he was wrong. That's not the case. This tetrahedron has an equi this is a triangle, an equilateral triangle, but these three sides are equal between each other, but they are not the same as one, which is the edge uh, length. So, in this tetrahedron, uh, which we easily can calculate the area because it's an equilateral triangle, we need to calculate its height to be able to, once we know the volume of one icosahedron, we multiply by 20 and we get the volume of the regular icosahedron. Let's move on, let's advance. This is a rectangle. The side is one because we are taking one as edge of the icosahedron. And if we will see the long side, is the diagonal of a regular pentagon, which we found out in a previous video that was the golden number. We are going to leave the link over here in the video. So if this is one, since this is the diagonal of a pentagon, this is the golden number, which is one plus square root of five divided by two. So OM, Let's write. The golden number was 5, 1 plus square root of 5 divided by 2. So OM is half of the length of this side. That implies that OM is equal to 1 plus square root of 5 divided by 4. And let's see uh, what it represents. That represents the, the distance between the center of the icosahedron and the midpoint of an edge. It's equal for all the edges. This is all regular. So this green segment is the distance between the center and the midpoint of the edge. Well, let's move on to a third figure. We have here the, the base of the tetrahedron of side 1. This is from the center to the midpoint of a side, OM, that's the green side, OM. And OG is going to be the height of the tetrahedron. But we need, first we need to find what is MG. MG is kind of uh, easily to find. I'm going to find it right now because in an equilateral triangle of side one, we draw all the heights that are the medians, that are the angle bisectors, that are everything. And so we know that the height of a of an equilateral side one is, let's put it in blue, a square root of three divided by two. But this, this piece GM, which I'm going to put in also blue but thicker, 
because it's the one we are interested in. It's one third of the height. So GM is one third multiplied by square root of three divided by two, which gives us square root of three divided by six. Well, we have now the elements to find the height of the tetrahedron because we have in a right angle triangle we have the hypotenuse which is 1 square root of 5 divided by 4 and gm which is square root of 3 divided by 6 so by the most famous theorem in mathematics which is Pythagoras we are going to do Pythagoras to find OG well uh, let's consider some algebra issues that is leading us this problem you see like how geometry leads us to to work with algebra the golden number this is half of the golden number is a number that has a square root and makes us that we have to learn how to work with these kind of numbers and so sometimes we need to do square root of 5 minus 2 square root of 5 and we wish to um, to have a number of this time a plus b square root of 5 that is instead of having two square roots one inside of the other to get rid of one and get just one square root that will be a number of, of the type of the of the golden number that is the golden number is one half plus one half square root of five a number of this type but sometimes we're lucky and sometimes not in this case we won't be able to find a and b rational numbers in order that this would be true so we have to content ourselves to leave this expression as this this is the simplest thing we can get of in this case but in other cases we are lucky and we are able to do this for instance that is the case of square root of 14 plus 6 square root of 5 we are going to write this as a plus b square root of 5 and so in order to, to try to find a and b we are going to square both, both sides and so we get 4, 14 plus 6 square root of 5 because the square takes away the square root and so here is going to be square root of a plus square this square is going to be 5b square plus 2ab ab square root of 5 so in order to <coughs> to this be true this is the rational part should be equal to 14 and the coefficient of the rational part is 2ab in this case should be equal to 6 we are starting we are we will start with the easiest part 2ab equals 6 which leads us to AB equals 4. So we have two cases, which are A1 and B3, or A3 and B1. Negative doesn't make sense, those, those negatives doesn't make sense because this has to be a positive number. And so we are going to try with these two numbers if they fulfill the condition that, that A squared plus 5b squared has to be equal to 14 let's start with the first one 1 square plus 5 times 9 equal 14 this gives a 45 46 is not equal to 14 so we have to say that this one doesn't work let's check uh, let's try with the other one 3 square plus 
5, 1 square equals 14. 9 plus 5 equals 14. 14 equals 14. Whoa! This one works. Uh, we could, uh, so, we would say that, um, I'm going to erase over there. That the square root of 14 plus 6 square root of 5 is equal to just a was 3 and b is 1. 3 plus square root of 5. So we have made a substantial simplification here because this expression with two squares is converted, simplified to an expression of just one square. A little unbelievable one. If you want to check this, I like to check things. Is we square up to both sides, this should be equal. If I square this, I get 14 plus 6 square root of 5. If I square this, is the square of 3 is 9. The square root of 5, this is 5. And then 2 times 3, 6. 6 square root of 5. So I get that 14 plus 6 square root of 5 is equal to 14 plus 6 square root of 5. Okay, so that's a very important result that we will have to use while we are calculating the volume. So I'm going to write it here at the right of the corner that square root of 14 plus 6 square root of 5 is equal to 3 plus square root of 5. Okay, we are getting close to the final result. So, we have to find the height, um, the height of this, and also the area, the area of the, the equilateral triangle. Let's start first with the area of the equilateral triangle, which is very, very easy. Uh, I'm going to put it here. Most of you probably already know what's the area of a nuclear triangle of side 1. 1, 1, 1, we know that the, the height is square root of 3 divided by 2. So the area is base times height divided by 2, which is square root of 3 divided by 4. I bet that most of you already had that result in, in your mind, but we needed to put it. So the area of an equilateral triangle of side 1 is square root of 3 divided by 4. Well, let's go now to the final calculation. We have here, I'm going to draw the triangle in we, in where we are going to apply a time. So we are going to apply Pythagoras in that triangle, which we already know, two sides. This is uh, from the center to the midpoint of the edge, which was 1 plus square root of 5 divided by 4. And this one is uh, gm square root of 3 divided by 6. And this is one side, so og square is going to be 1 plus square root of 5 divided by 4 minus square root of 3 divided by 6 square. That is OG, OG square is 1. 1 plus 5 that's 2 square root of 5 divided by 16 
minus 3 divided by 36. This is 6 plus 2 square root of 5 divided by 16. And we are going to simplify this one. Minus uh, 1 divided by 12. We could also have simplified here by 2. But in this case it's not convenient. It's, it's much simpler if we not, don't simplify that. So on G squared, we are going to take 48 as common denominator. 48 divided by 16, 3. 3 times 6 is 18. 48 divided by 3 times 2, 6. Square root of 5. Minus 4. 14 divided by 12 is 4. So we have that OG square is 14 plus 6 square root of 5 divided by 48. So OG is square root of 14 plus 6 square root of 5 divided by square root of 48. Plus, this guy is known. We already know what it is. We calculated it already. And so uh, the numerator is going to be 3 plus square root of 5. And here we can put uh, 16 times 3. So this is going to be 3 plus square root of 5 divided by 4 square root of 3. That's what's going to be OG. So now we have the area of the base, we have the height, we have everything for the final calculation. Well, now we have to do the final calculation. That is, we have to calculate the volume of one of these tetrahedrons, mm -hmm. of one of these, and multiply it by 20, because the icosahedron has 20 faces. Okay, so the volume of one tetrahedron is the area of the base is the area of an equilateral triangle which find which found was square root of three divided by four <coughs> times the height. The height is what we found here: three plus square root of five divided by four square root of three. And then the volume of a period is base times height divided by 3. Well, we can get rid here of the square root of 3. We can simplify. And so we have here 3 plus square root of 5 divided by 16 divided by 3. That is the volume of one tetrahedron is 3 plus square root of 5 divided by 48. But with uh, the volume of the icosahedron is 20 tetrahedron. So the volume of the icosa is 20 times 3 plus square root of 5 divided by 48. We can simplify this by, by 4 and we get here a 5 and we get here a 12. And if we do the distributive property, we get that is 15 plus 5 square root of 5 divided by 12. That's the volume of an icosahedron 
of sub of edge one. That's the volume, the volume. Exactly that number. That very simple number, which is of the same type of the golden number. The golden number was one half plus one half square root of five. Of the same time. The same. Uh, sorry, the same form of the number. Of, uh, the golden number. Well, this is the volume of a regular icosahedron of H1. But if the edge is A, we want to generalize the edge of the cosa is A. So, the area is going to be square root of 4, 3 divided by 4, a, a square. And the height is going to be this number times A. And so we are going to do the same operations that are here, the same numbers are there, but at the end we are going to get A cubed. And so that's going to give us the formula, the general formula for the volume of any regular icosahedron, which I'm going to do. The volume for a regular icosahedron of side A is equal to 15 plus 5 square root of 5 divided by 12 a cube and that's it and that's the simplest way we can put it it's pretty, pretty simple, neat and easy to calculate and and we got, and we found it, we derived it, we made all the deductions from the very beginning. And uh, well, I hope you uh, got it. And if you have any doubts in any steps, that any step you didn't get it, I will gladly answer you uh, to any question you may ask. Thank you very much.